The invention of artificial turf in the 1960s led to a whole new field, one that never needs mowing, watering, or weeding. Faux grass was developed by the carpet industry and made possible by technological advances. And the concept has really taken root. Synthetic turf has changed the landscape of professional sports. You see it in stadiums, arenas, and training fields around the world. It all starts with bags of white plastic pellets. This is the base material for the turf. They add green pellets for color, along with chemical stabilizers and additives. Equipment melts and extrudes the plastic through a steel plate with holes in it. This creates strands of green. The strands exit through a trough of water, which cools and solidifies them. Machinery pulls the strands through an enormous comb to keep them separated as they head to the next station. Here, rollers stretch the strands until they become as thin as real grass. The stretching also strengthens them. Spools now roll up the synthetic strands. Once a spool is full, they remove it. Next, they unwind several spools at a time. The strands come together to form a multiply synthetic yarn. The yarn travels over guides. This keeps it from slackening as a big spool winds it up. Further down the production line, mesh fabric merges with synthetic sheeting, while the multiply synthetic yarn travels through tubing to a tufting machine. The tufting machine is a giant sewing machine. It has up to 250 needles. These needles hook the yarn through the meshed synthetic sheeting. They make hundreds of rows of stitches per minute. Underneath, small knives cut the looped yarn so it looks like spikes of grass. As you can see, this process is a whole lot faster than waiting for grass to grow. An inspector examines the turf to make sure the yarns are even. Then machinery moves it forward to a coating roller. The roller picks up adhesive from a trough below and applies it to the backing of the turf as it moves across. This binds the looped web of artificial grass to the backing. The adhesive is a bit gooey at this point and needs to be dried. The dryer is partly open air and partly enclosed. The enclosed section is about 50 meters long. The temperature is carefully controlled, too hot, and the synthetic grass might melt. As it exits, hot pins burn holes into the turf to make it water permeable. Now they check to make sure this grass looks good on the surface. They pull out loose bits and measure the fibers. Then it's over to a device that simulates the effect of football cleats to confirm this turf is tough. To install artificial turf, they lay a rubber base and add the turf. They distribute sand throughout spikes of grass to give the turf weight. Then they spread rubber granules for a softening effect. But some turf is more carpet-like, no fillers needed. You're more likely to see that in floor hockey arenas. It's time to wrap up this turf job and toss a few balls around. And when it comes to looking like the real thing, artificial turf is definitely in the ballpark.